Hi guys, this is Mr. Riddle, and today's podcast is about something people don't like to talk about much, grief. Being sad about the loss of a friend, or a family member, or even a pet. While we may not like talking about it, we need to. Thanks for listening. It's important. It's often hard to know what to say or do when someone you care about is grieving. You may be afraid of intruding, or saying the wrong thing, or even making the, pe- the person feel worse than they already do. Or maybe you feel there's little you can do to make things better. While you can't take away the pain of the loss, you can provide much needed support and comfort. There are many ways to help a grieving friend or family member, starting with letting the person know that you care. What you need to know about bereavement and grief. First of all, what do they mean? Grief is defined as sorrow or sadness. Bereavement is sorrow or sadness because of a loss, usually due to a death. The death of a loved one is one of life's most difficult experiences. The bereaved struggle with many intense and frightening emotions, including depression, anger, fear, and often guilt. Often, he or she is isolated and alone in his or her grief, but having someone to lean on can help him or her through the grieving process. Don't let discomfort prevent you from reaching out to someone that's grieving. Now, more than ever, your support is needed. You might not know exactly what to say or what to do, but that's okay. You don't need to have the answers or give advice. The most important thing you can do for a grieving person is to simply be there. Your support and caring presence will help him or her cope with the pain and begin to heal. The better your understanding of grief and how it's healed, the better equipped you'll be to help a bereaved friend or family member. There is no right or wrong way to grieve. Grief does not always unfold in an orderly, predictable stages. It can be an emotional roller coaster with unpredictable highs, lows, and setbacks. Everyone grieves differently, so avoid telling the bereaved what he or she should be feeling or doing. Grief may involve extreme emotions and behaviors. Feelings of guilt, anger, despair, and fear are common. A grieving person may yell to the heavens, obsess about death, lash out at loved ones, or cry for hours on end. The bereaved need reassurance that what he or she feels is normal. Don't judge them or take his or her grief reactions personally. There is no set timetable for grieving. For many people, recovery after bereavement takes 18 to 24 months. But for others, the grieving process may be longer or shorter. Don't pressure the bereaved to move on or make them feel like they've been grieving for too long. This can actually slow the healing process. It's common to feel awkward when trying to comfort someone who is grieving. Many people do not know what to say or do. The following are suggestions to use as a guide. Acknowledge the situation. For example, say, I heard that your friend died. Use the word died. That will show that you're more open to talk about how the person really feels. Express your concerns. Example. I'm sorry to hear that this happened to you. Be genuine in your communication and don't hide your feelings. Example, I'm not sure what to say, but I want you to know that I'm here and that I care. Offer your support. Example, tell me what I can do for you. Ask how he or she feels. Don't assume you know how the bereaved person feels on any given day. Almost everyone worries about what to say to a grieving person, but knowing how to listen is much more important. Oftentimes, well many people avoid talking about the death or mentioning the deceased person, but the bereaved needs to feel that his or her loss is acknowledged, it's not too terrible to talk about, and that his or her loved one won't be forgotten. While you should never try to force someone to open up, it's important to let the bereaved know he or she has permission to talk to you about the loss. Talk candidly about the person who died, and don't steer away from the subject if the deceased name comes up. When it seems appropriate, ask sensitive questions, without being nosy, that invite the grieving person to openly express his or her feelings. Try simply, do you feel like talking? Accept and acknowledge all feelings. Let the grieving person know it's okay to cry in front of you, or to get angry, or to break down. Don't try to reason with him or her over how he or she shouldn't feel. 
The bereaved should feel free to express his or her feelings without fear of judgment, argument, or criticism. Be willing to sit in silence. Don't press if the grieving person doesn't feel like talking. You can offer comfort and support with your silent presence. If you can't think of something to say, just offer eye contact, a squeeze of a hand, or a reassuring hug. Let the bereaved talk about how his or her loved one died. People who are grieving may need to tell the story over and over again, sometimes in minute detail. Be patient. Repeating the story is a way of processing and accepting the death. With each retelling, the pain lessens. Offer comfort and reassurance without minimizing the loss. Tell the bereaved what he or she is feeling is okay. If you've gone through a similar loss, share your own experience if you think it would help. However, don't give unsolicited advice. Don't claim to know what the person is feeling or compare your grief to his or hers. Comments you need to avoid when trying to comfort the bereaved. I know how you feel. One can never know how another may feel. You could instead ask your friend to tell you how he or she feels. It's part of God's plan. This phrase can make people angry, and they often will respond with, What plan? Nobody told me about any plan. Look at what you have to be thankful for. They know they have things to be thankful for, but right now, those things aren't very important. He's in a better place now. The bereaved may or may not believe this. Keep your beliefs to yourself, unless you're asked. This is behind you now. It's time to get on with your life. Sometimes the bereaved are resistant to getting on with because they feel this means forgetting his or her loved ones. In addition, moving on is easier said than done. Grief has a mind of its own and works at its own pace. Avoid any statements that begin with you should or you will. These statements are too directive. Instead, you can begin with your comments with have you thought about or you might. It is difficult for many grieving people to ask for help. They might feel guilty about receiving so much attention, fear of being a burden, or be too depressed to reach out. You can make it easier for them by making specific suggestions such as, I'm going to the market this afternoon, what can I bring you from there? Or, I made beef stew for dinner, when can I come by and bring you some? Consistency is very helpful if you can manage it, being there for as long as it takes. This helps the grieving person look forward to your attentiveness without having to make the additional effort of asking again and again. You can also convey an open invitation by saying, let me know what I can do, which may make a grieving person feel more comfortable about asking for help. But keep in mind that the bereaved may not have the energy or motivation to call you when he or she needs something, so it's better for you to take the initiative to check in. Be the one who takes the initiative. There are many practical ways you can help a grieving person. You can offer to shop for groceries or run errands. You can drop off food that you have made so they don't have to cook. You can stay in their home and help taking phone calls or receiving guests. You can take care of housework, such as cleaning or laundry. You can help with their pets. You can actually take them on a walk. Grieving continues long after the funeral is over and the cards and flowers have stopped. The length of the grieving process varies from person to person, but in general, grief lasts much longer than most people expect. Your bereaved friend or family member may need your support for months or even years. Continue your support over the long haul. Stay in touch with the grieving person, periodically checking in, dropping by, or sending letters or cards. And a quick email is really easy to do. Once the funeral is over and the other mourners are gone, the initial shock of the loss is worn off, your support is more valuable than ever. Don't make assumptions based on outward appearances. The bereaved person may look fine on the outside, while on the inside, he or she is still suffering. Avoid saying things like, you are so strong, or you look so well. This puts pressure on the person to keep up appearances and to hide his or her true feelings. The pain of bereavement may never fully heal. Be sensitive to the fact that life may never feel the same. You don't get over the death of a loved one. 
The bereaved person may learn to accept the loss, but the pain may and the pain may lessen in intensity over time, but the sadness may never completely go away. Offer extra support on special days. Certain times and days of the year will be particularly hard on your grieving friend or family member. Holidays, family milestones, birthdays, and anniversaries often reawaken grief. Be sensitive to these on these occasions. Let the bereaved person know that you're there for whatever he or she may need. Watch for warning signs. <clears throat> it's common for a grieving person to feel depressed, confused, and disconnected from others, or like he or she is going crazy. But if the bereaved person's symptoms don't gradually start to fade, or if they get worse with time, this may be a sign that normal grief has evolved into a more serious problem, such as depression. Tell a trusted adult if you observe any of the following warning signs after the initial grieving period, especially if it's been over two months since the death, if the person has difficulty functioning in daily life, if there's extreme focus on the death, if there's excessive bitterness, anger, or guilt, if the person is neglecting personal hygiene, if you notice any alcohol or drug abuse, if you see that they're having an inability to enjoy life, if they're hallucinating or seeing things, if you see them withdrawing from others, if there's a constant feeling of hopelessness, and if they talk about hurting themselves. It can be tricky to bring up your concerns to the bereaved person as you don't want to be perceived as invasive. Instead of telling the person what to do, try stating your own feelings. I'm troubled by the fact that you aren't sleeping. Perhaps you should look into getting help. Take talks of hurting themselves very, very seriously. If a grieving friend or family member talks about hurting themselves, you need to tell a trusted adult immediately. Even if you promised not to tell anyone, it's more important to keep your friend or family member safe than it is to keep your promise. Thanks everyone. I know this is not a fun topic to discuss, but it is an important one. We'll talk about this more in class. Remember, if you ever need to talk to someone, find a trusted adult. If you ever need it, I'm always available.